Hello, my name is James, and I'm here to talk to you today about using Prima Fasci with Zapier. Now, many of you know what Prima Fasci is already. That's why you're watching my video on it. Um, but you may not know what Zapier is or how to use it. So let me share that with you. I want you to think of Zapier like an air traffic controller tower, right? It's able to direct things from one place to another. Those things in this case are your data. So data that you use in one application, the tower or Zapier is going to be able to say, all right, now take that data and put it in this form and add it in that app over there. Um, so it's sort of a middleman application. It's a service that moves data from one web app to another based on a set of rules that we're going to call zaps uh, that you define. In a nutshell, that's what it is. So if you go online uh, to zapier.com and you take a look at all the different apps that work uh, with their integration, you're going to notice things like Clio, Practice Panther, uh, you're going to notice things like Google Sheets, Google, uh, Gmail, Google Forms, Trello, Facebook, all these wonderful, popular, very useful apps for your law firm that already have a Zapier integration. So you'll be able to automate data across each other. So for example, let's say that whenever you create a new contact in Prima Fasci or when you open a new case, you want to automatically create an entry for that person inside QuickBooks because you use QuickBooks for your accounting or Stripe because that's how you're going to collect your payment and send invoices or MailChimp because that's how you're going to stay in contact with your newsletter or any of these other services that use Zapier. Another example, um, let's say you have a form on your website and on that form you have your clients enter some basic information or questions that they want to have answered in a consultation. Well now you can take that data and you can add it to a note inside of Prima Fasci that you create for a contact. And all that will happen automatically. You just have to set up the Zap inside of Zapier so it'll happen. So once you subscribe to Zapier, and there's a free version, it's limited, I think you get two or five Zaps or something like that. Um, but you know, for 20 bucks you get the paid version to pay somebody to do the work that this robot is going to do for you would cost way more than 20 bucks a month. I would recommend just use the $20 a month version, the professional, that's going to give you access to Prima Fasci and all the other premium apps uh, that integrate with Zapier. Once you have that, you need to go in there and you're going to, we're going to set up, and I'll show you how in a little bit, we're going to set up the Zaps, these rules that say when, a, when this triggering action occurs, I want it to trigger this whole workflow here. So we're talking about two things, triggers and actions. The trigger is that initiating action that happens in some application. So you'll pick your app and you'll say, for example, in, in my web form on my website, um, say it's with Squarespace. On my Squarespace form, when somebody submits a new entry, I want it to automatically create a contact for me inside of Prima Fasci. Okay, so that's the triggering of action. And then the, the action or the resulting action is that thing that happens inside of Prima or in any other app. Send me a notification via text message. Uh, send a notification to my team via Slack or Flock or one of these other tools out there. Now, depending on the type of data that goes from the trigger action or from the trigger to the action, uh, you might need to do some things like filter or search to make sure you pull out the right contact to then add the stuff to their account or to their folder or note or account. Um, but for simplicity purposes, we're going to go over some of the basics. And you'll see once we do the example how the other things will add complexity to it. So how can this be useful to you and your firm? Well, <clears throat> there's over a thousand applications that work with Zapier. Um, here's some of them. Google Forms, Google Sheets, Gmail, Google Calendar. You might be using those in your firm already or you might be considering adding them to your workflow. Why? Because some, for some of these they're free. If you use the G Suite paid version, it's very inexpensive uh, and they're professional tools. They provide security, they provide updates and functionality that uh, are useful for gathering information from your clients or from potential clients 
and helping with your case. Um, MailChimp, Constant Contact. So those, of course, for managing email newsletters or managing client communications. Facebook ads, Instagram, YouTube, social media. Uh, LinkedIn is one that works with it as well. So if you do any social media campaigns to find new leads uh, that might want to hire you for work, you can automate those processes because those things have Zapier integrations. Um, if we're talking about scheduling appointments and you have an app for doing that, like Acuity Scheduling, that works with Zapier, so you can plug it into Prima Fasci. Um, Salesforce, Podio, Infusionsoft, Pipedrive, Trello, these other CRMs or contact management systems or uh, productivity management systems, these will work with Zapier. So if you really like using a Kanban board like Trello has because it lets you organize your thoughts in a visual form that are easy for you to organize and track your progress on your tasks throughout the day, you can set that up. Evernote, Excel, Office 365, you might use those already. PayPal and Stripe, so for collecting payments from your clients, two very useful applications for that. Uh, QuickBooks, accounting, right, or zero accounting is another popular one now. Uh, they have they have pre, uh, Zapier integration, so you can integrate them now directly with Prima Fasci. Um, I already talked a little bit about having a Squarespace website or uh, Squarespace, WordPress. If you have forms on your website that you want to use that data to put into your contact management system or build lists or things like that, you can do that. And one really great one is Ring Central. So I've found that Ring Central is a real a really useful tool for managing your phone system. So it's a VoIP online IP phone system, um, easy to deploy, easy to sign up for, quality is great, and it has features like fax, SMS, text messaging. Um, they even have a built-in meetings application now. It actually, they licensed Zoom.us meetings, and so they have their own version of that there. Or there's another app called Glip, which is like a team messaging and task management thing. Um, so you can use a lot of really great tools um, that already have a Zapier integration. So you can add those into improve productivity in your firm. And so you can automate actions in all of those apps. Or you can use those apps to trigger actions that you want to occur inside of Prima, like, hey, record a note that I had a phone call with so-and-so. Hey, record a note that, I don't know, this other thing happened. Helps you gather ad results, automate document preparation, automate client communication. And that's really one of the biggest ones. Um, if you get your clients to use something like Slack or if they use text messaging already, um, it is just phenomenal. You can send notes about everything automatically through those platforms. Um, so again, it also helps you maintain more detailed case notes automatically. Now, uh, some of the benefits of using a Zapier and Prima Fasci enabled immigration law firm, well, you get to use the newest tools. Um, a lot of times you'll see that new tools are really important. If you're using a legacy immigration form system, right? Like I know there's a lot of people who are still using Impro or Imforms. Um, Impro is a really old, doesn't integrate with anything. Um, and new tools are better because your clients, they know how to use it a text messaging app. They know how to use things like, a, probably they know how to use a computer. Um, and some might be demanding that you share more information with them so they can see what's going on in their case and this is how you're able to do it. So you can add new tools to your workflow without destroying your whole workflow. You don't have to change your whole system if you're already using tools that use something like Zapier. Um, and you can do this without writing a line of code. Uh, a lot of this really is do-it-yourself. It's super easy to set up. We're going to show you how today. So, um, some other benefits of using a Zapier or Prima Fasci enabled system. Um, think about an accounting system, right? So with Prima Fasci, we built immigration forms and case management, immigration specific features. We didn't set out to design a whole accounting system, right? So we don't have an accounting system built in. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to use one, but you should use a good one. You should use one that's been developed over years by experts in the accounting system development field, like QuickBooks or Xero, or there's other systems out there as well. 
So simple question, would you prefer that I try and reinvent the wheel from zero? And then that's what you would have to use if we didn't have something like a Zapier integration, right? You'd be stuck in one system. Or would you prefer to use the best tools out there and just use them together? I hope you would want to use the best tools together. Um, so some other examples, right? Like if you want to add e-signatures to your firm because you want your clients to e-sign a retainer agreement or a promissory note or some other document you might have them sign. To date, USCIS won't accept photocopied signatures, so we don't have that as part of it yet, but when it happens, we'll make it happen too. But there's apps like HelloSign out there that already have a Zapier integration. Easy to use, very user-friendly. Um, again, no coding involved. There's plenty of apps to use for sending text messages, Slack messages. If you need to update information in a spreadsheet based on something you're doing in your firm, you can do that through Google Sheets or Excel. Or if you have a new social media campaign that you want to track the results of in an easy-to-read spreadsheet, you can do that. Or if you want to sell your own online course as a way to gather potential leads, you can tie those two together. So Teachable is an online app where you can set up your own course or your own... You know, if you wanted to say uh, how to easily, uh, it's kind of deceiving, right? How to easily get your green card, right? But how to deal with waivers when you have to file for a green card or something like that. Or maybe you're actually targeting other attorneys who are going to be a source of leads for you in the future. Well, the leads that you gain or information that you get from people in Teachable, you can use to add to a spreadsheet or add to a list here or email list or things like that. So there's really just a huge number of ways that you can develop your firm and your practice by using the best tools that are out there. How easy is it? It's very easy. And so we're going to start walking through a couple examples for you. Here we go. All right, so let's start off just by taking a quick look at Zapier.com um, because there are there is a free plan where you can have five Zaps or you can set up five unique rules. Uh, but these are only going to be two step zaps, one action, sorry, one trigger, and one resulting action because of it. Um, you get five of those, and they're only two steps, so it's something. If you're super worried about the price, um, start with the professional though, uh, because it's only eighteen thirty-three per month, or twenty if you pay month to month, uh, twenty bucks a month. You get twenty zaps. They can be the multi-step zaps, so you can say. If this happens, then do these one, two, three, four, five different things. Um, and then you get access to the premium apps as well. There's some applications where you got to have a subscription in order to be able to use them, like for Salesforce or I think QuickBooks is one of those too. Um, you can also look at some of the other plans here. Just something to keep your eye on is, um, you know, of course, there's the monthly cost. How many zaps can you have with that plan? Um, it says zaps run every 15 minutes or five minutes or whatever. So what happens is there's some zaps that are instant. The ones we're going to be dealing with typically are instant ones. Um, if, however, you're using like the free version or uh, if you're using an application that doesn't have an instant zap, then yeah, when the action happens, so someone fills out the form, you might need to wait 15 minutes until the rest of the work happens unless it's built to be an instant one. So keep an eye on that. Um, tasks per month that it can do, 100 for free, 1,000 under the $20, $20 a month plan. And it, it goes up from there. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend for starting off, use the starter. Yeah, the starter plan. That's, what it That's the $20 a month one. Um, totally worth it. And look, even if you're paying, even if you're paying professional plus on $114 per month, how much are you going to need to pay an employee to do that? And this is automatic, so it's working 24-7. It's a huge, huge value. All right, enough of the sales points here. Let's go into our Zapier account, and we've already gone to click to create a new Zap. So we're going to create a new Zap, and uh, let's come up with a name for it. And it's going to be... Form entry, so let's say that we're making a form entry on our website, a form on our website, and it's going to do that to create new contact inside of Prima. So the apps we're using is going to be Google Forms. I'll warn you right now, Google Forms is one where if you don't have a premium plan, then you will have to pay for it 
not not pay for it, sorry, but you're going to have to wait for that zap to run. Uh, so let's go to uh, new response in a spreadsheet. Every Google form, you know, we just created a real simple one here, but it comes with, it's attached to a spreadsheet essentially. And when you look at the responses, you can see that there's the response in a Google sheet as well. All right, so that's the form we're using. Let's go to here. When a new response is entered in the spreadsheet, that's the trigger we want. Save and continue. This is the account we're using. I've connected an account before. So when you get here, it's going to say, hey, you need to connect to your Google account. You click this button and it's going to say, all right, log into your Google account here. We already did that. So we're going to continue. Now you're going to choose the spreadsheet that you want to use. So we're going to select Google Forms. Nope, not that one. We're going to select the information form responses. And the worksheet in there is this one. It's form responses one. So there's multiple worksheets inside the Google spreadsheet. That's where the responses come in. And it's going to say, all right, we're going to look for some sample responses. You got to have at least one sample response in there. We have one right here. All right, now we need an action step. So you click on this link or here. So let's click here, add a step. This is the point where you can say, all right, I want to do an action or a search from another app. Or if I'm building a more complex zap, I want to create a different path. So whenever this happens, there might be some data that's conditional in there, right? If they say they're from the United States, I want it to do this set of things. But if it says that they're from Uganda or Russia or whatever, I want it to do these other things. You can set that up using paths or filters. Uh, but let's use action or search because we're just going to create a real simple one here. And the app we're going to use, Prima Fashi. Let's use this one here. And the action we want to do is we want to create a new contact uh, when somebody submits something to that form. So we're going to create new contact and click Save and Continue. And it's going to have you log into your Prima account as well by clicking here. We've already done that, so we're going to continue. And now you're going to set up how those contacts should be created. What data from which fields should you use to create that? So first name, I'm going to click this little button here. We're going to find the field from our form for the first name right here. And the last name. We're going to use the last name field here. If we have a middle name field, which we actually do, I have to scroll down for it. Here we go. There's the middle name. And if they have an email, we're going to create that here. That's the email. Uh, in my Google form, I didn't put in birth date or a lot of these other things. So I'm just going to skip over those for now. Okay, so let's scroll down to the bottom. But you can see there's all these things, these data points that you could import. And let's go continue because we've got the required essentials here. So we're going to send a new... Um, Sorry, that's a yawn. So we're going to send in this new contact, this new test contact into Prima. Send. Here we go. It's going to create that, and it's going to tell us that it was successfully sent. Great. All right, so we can click Finish. Now, we could click Finish. What information is that going to bring into Prima? Let me open it uh, over here. And not there, not there, not there. Here, I guess, yeah, but you don't need to see that yet. We're just going to look at Pimmy. All right, found him. All right, so in my, in my Prima page, uh, my Prima account, I've created this contact Pimmy, and that's the one whose data I entered on the form. I did it twice, so there's two of them there, but you get the idea. But it's going to bring in the name, the email, just the stuff that we defined in there. Now, if you want to bring in more information like an address or a phone number, let me show you how to do that now. You're going to make this into a multi-step zap. If you want to create a contact and add their address and phone number at the same time, this is required to create a multi-step zap. So let's add a step. 
another action. And the app we're using again is Prima Fasci. And this time, instead of creating a new contact, which has already been created in the order of this thing here, we're going to create a new phone number. And we're going to click Save and Continue. And we can create a standard name for the phone calls. You don't have to. We won't. Uh, but the number we need. Now, where do we get the number from? We actually get the number from this information form that I've created because that's one of the uh, fields at the bottom here, phone number. So when we're inside Zapier, for the number field, click this button here. Now we're going to select New Response in Spreadsheet. And scroll down to the phone number. That'll be the phone number they entered. The rest of the... Huh. Excuse me. The rest of the fields on this page are fields that you would you you can enter these information for in the phone number screen inside Prima. What type of a phone number is it? Let's label all the ones that are coming in as mobile. That's probably going to be the most typical ones. And contact ID. Right now we need to know under which contact should we create this phone number. Again, we're going to click over here. And that information is actually going to come from the Create New Contact step of the Zap that we have. So let's click on there. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and let's find ID. Not the user ID. This is like the Prima Fasci user ID. We want the contact ID. This one right here. And now we'll click Continue. It's going to run a test. Send a test. The contact ID number 2177. All right, and it's successful. And now let's say we want to bring in an address for that same person off that same form. Add another step to your Zap. It's another action. The app you're using, Prima Fasci. And let's create a new address. Again, We've already got the account connected. The address itself, so this is like line one of the address. I'm going to click here, and it comes from that original form that we created. Here's address line one. We don't have a, a line two for this set. I, I have not found line two of the address to be very useful up to now. Uh, the apartment suite or floor number. Let's add that again from here. So if there's an apartment suite or floor, it should come from here. The number would be here. Uh, this is supposed to say four, and it's a typo. We're going to correct it. Don't worry about that. But what kind of addresses are these, are these going to be? Typically, these are going to be their primary or their mailing or their current address. I would label them all to be the same thing. Um, let's make this a mailing. So now every address that comes in through here, that'll be the mailing address. We'll call it the mailing address that it is. All right, and let's go to, well, let's also make it the primary address. Now, which contact should this be created under? Again, that information comes from actually step two of the zap when we created that contact. So let's bring in the contact ID. And you'll see that there's actually a lot of data points to, to select throughout um, the zaps that we're creating. So you want to be careful that you're choosing the right piece of data. Uh, all right, city for the address. Let's Again, that's going to come from the form. So here's the city. The state is optional, but we have it. So let's put it in from the state. Country, I think we have that here too from the original form. So let's add the country. We have a zip code, so let's add the zip code, and we'll leave the rest of those blank, and we'll just click continue, right? And we're going to tell it to click to send a test to Prima Fasci. All right, so we'll send that test in there. It's contact ID number 2177, and let me see if I can locate my, my Prima account here. There we go. 
So which one of these is 2177? Let's take a look. It's not that one because that one appears as 2176. Let's go to this one then. This is 2177. So let's take a look at what we have here for the addresses. Sure enough, we have that address that we imported, and it's the current and the mailing address. Let's look at phones, and sure enough, there's the phone number that we imported. It's been formatted correctly, and it's in there. So that's one way to add those items into Prima very easily. All right, so if we went back to our original Google form here. Oh, I didn't have the Zap enabled. Okay, well, we, when we're building our Zap, the last step you don't want to forget is click Finish. And it says, are you ready to turn on your zap? Yes, I'm going to turn on my zap. We're going to wait for a couple seconds while that happens. Then we're good to go. I wonder if I can, I think I can go back. I can't. All right, so let's do it again. Mm, I'm going to get confused with that, though. We'll call it Bobby Bob's McGoo. Bob at mcmurray.com, address 321, Happy Street, and let's say that's an apartment, 100, again, Holland, Michigan, all eights, USA. Phone number, it's going to be that. All right, now we can submit it. And according to our zap, what should happen? It should be able to take the response from the spreadsheet from that Google form, create a new contact, and then it's going to add the phone number and address for it. So let's take a look in our Prima account. Okay, and you can see here that Bobby Magoo has made it into Prima automatically. We did have to wait a minute. This was one of those zaps uh, that's not instant. A number of other systems out there are, but Google form has made us wait a little bit, but that's okay. Because here it is, it happened automatically. We didn't have to do anything manually. And you see his information, he's got his email here, and it also brought in his address and his phone number. So there you have it, super easy. And sky's the limit when it comes to these sort of things. I mean, you can really use your imagination when it comes to what type of apps do I want to use or what types of apps could I use or what would be useful to automate some systems in my firm. Great place to start is right here in the Zapier website because you can see all the apps that work with it. So some of my favorite apps here are Google Sheets because if you need to keep a spreadsheet of a particular project or something you're working on that needs to get done, easy to do. Gmail because you can automate the sending of emails. Um, Slack is really useful. So if you haven't learned any more about Slack yet, let me just give it to you briefly. Slack is a, it's an app. It's also an online app. They make apps for your phones, Android, iPhone, whatever. Um, but it's a communication tool. So it's like WhatsApp, but it's totally closed, right? So the only people who have access to your Slack channel are people that you give access to it. So if you want to share information inside your firm, you create a Slack channel for your firm. And the only people who have access are the ones you give it to. Inside Slack, there's different, uh, let's call it topics, they call them channels, right? So in this channel, this is where we, we talk about pending tasks, or this channel is where we talk about deadlines, or this channel is where we talk about new leads, or this channel is where we talk about billing. Just uh, you divide the conversation up into different topics and they call those channels. So what you can do is you can create like a notifications channel, and every time... Uh, someone creates a new contact in Prima, you can have it send a notification. Say, hey, new contact was created. Here's the name. Here's the link to it. So all you got to do is click it and you go right to it. Um, if you get a new email to a, a shared email folder, you could have it send a notification there. If the Visa Bulletin updates, you can, send a no you can have a notification get sent there. Um, all these other different things you can do uh, when it comes to tasks or if you want to see... If you want to get a notification when somebody is assigned a task or completes a task or reassigns a task or a phone call, you can set up notifications for that in different Slack channels or all in the same Slack channel so you can see the different activity that goes on in your firm throughout the day. So Slack is super helpful for firm-wide firm communication. 
Uh, these are the most popular ones on Zapier, right? So MailChimp, Google Calendar, of course. Um, Trello, team collaboration tool. It lets you use, uh, like, it's almost like sticky notes, setting them up in different columns. It's what they call a Kanban board. It's an organizational tool. Facebook leads, very popular. So if you gather leads via Facebook, you can automate that. Uh, you could say, all right, I want to create a contact in Prima or I want to create a contact in my lead system. And then I want to automatically assign a task to my paralegal Susan who's going to then follow up with that person. So you can become very efficient with that and you don't have to worry about having to actually log back into Facebook lead ads in order to see that you have a new lead. Um, there's, there's so many websites and pieces of data that are going to be coming at you as an attorney that it's difficult to remember to go and check all of them, which is why something like Slack is super useful. You could create a Facebook or a Slack channel for your firm called Facebook lead ads. And every time you get a lead, it's going to send you a little notification or a desktop pop-up or a ding or something like that saying, hey, you've got a new lead from your Facebook ad. Follow up with them right away. Google Contacts, Airtable, all these things. Even uh, so these are the most popular ones, right? There's other ones out there, but I mean, really, yeah, there's QuickBooks Online. That's a good one. Zero Accounting, Fresh Desk. There's Fresh Books, PayPal, all of these. A lot of really great ones that you can use. So there you have it. Um, there's Connecting Prima Fasci to Zapier in a nutshell. We ran you through a basic creation of one app. Now I just want you to take some time and start figuring out what are the new apps that you're going to use in your firm now that you can do this. Um, if I've enabled the comments on this video, just type in some things that you're going to be doing there. Comment. Let us know what you're going to be using. If you want to shoot me an email or a sales department or you want to call us and let us know, hey, thank you so much for this or whatever. We really like this app that we're going to use as well now. We'd love to hear it. So again, my name is James Betzel. I'm the founder of Prima Fasci, and I hope you all start using Zapier now. Thanks. Have a good day.